The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 23rd. Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off 81 points, 25,652 is the print. S&P down four. NASDAQ 100 up about four points. Russell down four. I'm rounding here, but a lot of fours in the pictures. The semis are up five. Transport's down 67. Spot volatility index barely budging. Up seven pennies. Trade out at 12.32. Gold is off $9.50. Silver down 22 cents. Light sweet crude back 12 pennies. Leading the charge, the upside auto zone. That's in the zone nearly 2% to the upside. 12 bucks. ABIO Med, however you say it, up nearly 3% or $10. Lancaster Colony uh, Corp, that's up nearly 10. William Sonoma up nearly 10. Snop Sis. Synopsis, yeah, synopsis, uh, up 7% or $6 and change. Booking Holdings, a big dollar loser to the downside. Really not that big of a deal. $8 off four tenths of a percent. San Filippo, San Filippo John. JBSS down 9% or 7 bucks. That could be a big deal. Ultragenics down 7%, 547. Rare is the ticker symbol. BlackRock is off 5 bucks. Netflix down 4. Charter Communication off 4. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And what that means to me is what you want to look at. Well, Larry C. writes in. He was the first one to write in. Got this email at 1122 this morning. So let's go right to his question. Larry C., uh, says the following, hey, Steve-O. Well, I say, hey, hey, larry -o. Although larry -o, I don't know, that doesn't sound right. But uh, how about LC? That sounds better. LC, how you doing out there? He says, can you look at the USO in today's show? Specifically, I'm looking for good resistance and price to go short via the SCO. Uh, this would be a swing trade through most of the rest of the year. Wow. Now, what uh, Larry's calling for is for light sweet crude, then, in essence, to top for the rest of the year. So I do have SEO up on my screen. That way, Larry can go ahead and take a look at it. He can take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame out here. And so if you're looking for resistance here, you've got the daily chart at 1447. And you have the weekly chart, the top of the box, at 1457. So we would have to say that those would be the two levels that you would focus on. Whether those are the correct levels or not, I don't know. Because the more, the, the, the more better, right? The better thing to do would be to, now I don't know what's inside the USO. I don't know if it's just the active contract which just changed over to October as far as light sweet crude, or maybe there's multiple contracts in here. 
But that would be helpful to understand. And I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe somebody in the den knows right now that it's just simply the October contract. But that being here nor there, if we do take a look at what the October contract is doing, and we look at the daily time frame, both the daily and weekly, because you're looking at uh, trying to come up with a level of resistance that's going to, in your case, you say you want to trade that through the end of the year out here. Well, then you're looking at the weekly, like now I'm using because the uh, crude oil contract has, uh, has switched over to October. Um, I'm looking at Stevie's synthetic version of the uh, contract, but simply because it provides us with the best data. So the number you would be paying attention to, in my opinion, is 68.88. There, there we could have resistance. If price closes over 68.88, Larry, then your next spot to be looking for that possible short is 70.12. And at this stage of the game, on uh, August the 23rd, if you were to see a close, I'm not talking today. You're looking for numbers for a swing trade. If you see a close above 70.12, regardless of where you got in on the short, you're wrong on the SCO. So that's how I would be taking a look at that type of trade. I would be first go and do the homework and see which if it's just one contract that is inside there. And if so, uh, and it happens to be the um, the October contract for light sweet crude, then I would be paying to these numbers again, 6888. And then 7012 would be the two numbers. So best of luck with that trade. We had a second requester, actually a third requester out there. Let's go take a look at the second request. This comes from Jeff E. So I'm getting an early start on the questions today, Jeff. Not as early as LC was. Yours came in an hour later, 1230. Um, so it reminds me of that PGA commercial. I don't know if you've seen it, but they go out there. Somebody does an interview and says, hey, what in essence, what time do you come to work? And they're basically saying, hey, what time do you get on the driving range? And then somebody says, oh, I started at 8.30 in the morning. And then they interview the next person, and they say, well, Justin gets in at 8.30. And that person says, oh, it's 7.30. And finally it gets to, I think, where it might have been Ricky Fowler who says, yeah, yeah, 4 a.m. or 3.30. So in any event, uh, hey, thanks for sending in a request anyways, and certainly doing it uh, before the show. So uh, uh, Jeff goes on to say, he didn't need that dissertation, by the way. I probably didn't need to give it, but it was in the front of my mind. Best thing, better out than in. Did you, did you, you've heard that, right? Better out than in. So if something comes in your mind, just simply let it go. And if it's a problem, uh, hey, when I say uh, be a pioneer of your future, not a prisoner of you, Pat, your past out there, that's because all of us have a past. As I've got a, we all got, I got a past that was yesterday. And whatever calls I made, the market and so forth, we all have past. And we cannot be a prisoner of it. And if you've got something that is just dragging you down, feels like you're carrying, you got a noose around your neck, or you're carrying all this heavy luggage or whatever it is, it's just one question you have to ask yourself. Why don't you put down that luggage? Why don't you put down that thing that is slowing you down? It, just close your eyes and imagine what your life would be like if you could get rid of that. And you can, and you can do it in the snap of your fingers, in a heartbeat out there. Do not be a prisoner of your past. Instead, be a pioneer of your future. Hey, Jeff goes on to say, I can see from the newsletter that IAG has broken below its TAS support level. Can you tell me what the next support level would be for IAG? And this is Jefferoni. I like it. We got the nicknames coming in from Kissimmee. All right, so Jeff. I'm going to go ahead and do my work here during this break, and we're going to come back and answer your question about IAG. I believe that is I am gold. I like I am Spartacus. Steve Rhodes will be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. 
Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, so for Jeff Arena, we're taking a look at I Am Gold. That I Am Spartacus comes from that movie. I, I watched just the end of it again uh, last night as I was turning through the channels because it's so hard to watch the hogwash uh, media channels, news stuff out there. You know, you're trying to get the news. Uh, me just trying to find out, hey, what's going on in Hawaii? What's the uh, storm path and all those type of stuff? And and uh, in any event, uh, that thing you do. So that's where the I am Spartacus came from. But hey, let's get back to Jeff's question. He was asking where the next support level is in IAG. And what we can see here and what Jeff is referring to is he's referring to the bottom of the daily profile, which is 414. We're trading below that right now. Now, inside the buy AG, the most recent swing point from a few days ago, August 16th, had 4.9 million shares. You're already at 3 million shares today. So it's pushing into that level or those lows with volume. Not really a good thing. Swing point on a weekly basis, there's none exist to help you identify support. It really boils down to the monthly chart then, Jeff. So let's go ahead and uh, explode this out here. And I mean explode in a nice way. And we can see on a monthly chart, and we're nearing the end of the month, uh, the bottom of its box is 375. It's a bullish structured box. Uh, it's the first month since that box formed. By the way, that box formed out here in November of 2017. It's the first time from a monthly standpoint that we are inside the box at all. The top is 492, the bottom is 375. So to answer your question, 375 is really the next support level for IAG. Volume-wise, um, you've got volume of 59 million shares for the month out here. The sign of strength off of the bottom on a monthly basis, you'd have to say took place on February of 2016. There was 146 million shares there. Now the top of that candle, is 257. So that's uh, quite a ways uh, below the bottom of that box of 375. So if I were AG were to close below the bottom of the box at the end of the month, 375, then you come back and say, well, maybe IAG is just going to come back to the breakout area, which in essence are the lows from January of 2016. So thanks for writing in. I hope that helps. And I appreciate the uh, the nickname as the uh, sign-off. 
I love it. Kevin S. out here. No, his nickname is Kevin. Uh, we're going to go with KS out there. Uh, he says, Steve, a good time to add new money to long-term investments. Sure seems like every dip continues to be bought. So as long as uh, you're taking a look at long-term money and truly long-term, and, and I'll answer it because I've said this uh, consistently, and I will still repeat it, and so the answer there is yes. But the qualifier is always going to be, you know, where are you at in your long-term investment portfolio? Is this being uh, money being added because you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s? Your 80s, your 90s, you know, what that's really an important aspect. If it's just long term at this stage, yeah, you can, you can, you can keep adding chunks at a time. If you're really trying to time the markets, let's say you're in your elder years and you say, I've got a chunk of change on the side, I want to do the best that I can to try to time it, then we kind of come back to um, LC. Larry C's a question with regard to uh, light sweet crude. He's trying to time something for a more of an intermediate term time frame. And so I don't know what the end of the day close is going to be like. But K KS, if it's money for your kids, and you're, let's say you're 50 and younger, I just use that. I just pulled 50 out of my arse out there. But if you're 50 and younger, then yeah, because you're sticking it away for 20, 25 years until we get that bull market, uh, bear market top, which you'll know about. I'll know about it as long as we're doing the show and, or a newsletter and so forth. We'll know when that is in. It is not in. And at that stage of the game, we'll take a look at a different uh, trading and investing strategy. We'll continue to follow the money to try to figure out where it's going because uh, you, from a long-term standpoint, you may be able to find that next bull market. Jim Cramer is absolutely right. There's always a bull market somewhere. You just have to do the old Jerry Maguire, follow the money. But back to the question at hand here with regard to the market, and everybody can do this at home. You can just go ahead and take a look at the SPY, so I won't even go to the S&P 500, and you can start doing the, you'll use multiple tools here. So we'll use uh, Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave. You'll start at that nice low that formed on June 28th. Uh, 2018, you just simply start doing the wave count out there, and you will see that two days ago you got to wave number seven. Now, oftentimes, that's letter G, oftentimes at wave number seven, you can see the largest change in trend. So KS out here, I'd say you're going to add it today as an example, knowing that you might have a top. Nah, you wouldn't do that. Doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense to me that you would do that. So I just want to make sure I'm kind of qualifying my advice. Again, if you're 20 years old, 30 years old, it's not going to make a hill of beans in the long run out there. If you're older, maybe it does. So today, right now, at 1.23 in the afternoon, this happens to be a key reversal session. Now, I know that most of you out there are saying, what the heck did he just say? Well, I just said it was a key reversal session. That means it's actually the first potential bearish candle to confirm this pattern. Not the seventh wave, but see, it's the Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal that is out here. Last time, by the way, that we had a topping signal was right back here on August 9th. That was a bearish engulfing candle. We saw a move lower for about four or five days, and we had a nice little hammer candle August 15th. On any move lower, Kevin, or anybody else out there, if you take a look at the SPY, that's your target. First, it's a swing point. Second, it's a bullish hammer candle out there, and you know that low of that should hold. So your target on any downside action out here, where it is at, if you're trying to time the market, said you'd be looking at would be about the 280.16 level, somewhere there or slightly north of that. Of course, depending on volume. If volume comes motoring down into that, then what we're going to see is we're going to see move down into about the 278 level. I don't. First of all, I'm not saying that's where it's going. Because right now, it's got some things, it's got some price areas that it would have to get to. get to. Now, a key reversal, by the way, is where the previous day's high and low has been exceeded. That has already taken place in the SPY. Uh, you have to be in an extended condition. If we get to wave number seven, if we've got an RMI indicator, I guarantee you that the market is in an extended condition out there. Not because it's the so-called longest bull run, which it is not. It is BS for somebody to say that. But I'm not going to go change the news media out there. Um, but we proved that yesterday, especially if you look at the S&P 500, already had a bear market in 2011. Just everybody chooses to ignore it. Everybody chooses to ignore the facts that are out there. In any event here, let's stay on track. So if you were to see the third element of a key reversal is that price has to close at least one tick, in essence, below its open. 
That's the little red bodied candle. It's not a bearish reversal candle, but a key reversal candle. It's not a Japanese, I shouldn't say bearish reversal. It's not a Japanese bearish candlestick. But a key reversal from the Western side of things is a bearish pattern out there. Now, in the case of the spies, you can see, as like Jeff was pointing out about uh, market profiles out here, uh, it's trading in essence right now inside the box. Could just be turned into a consolidation. But Kevin, if you're looking for a spot to go ahead and add, and you're in your elder years, and this is some type of top, then I would be putting some money in at the 283.96 in the spies, if it's the spies that you're taking a look at. You don't have to put it all in at that stage, because we'll assess what's going on should the market actually pull back to give you that opportunity out there. So I know that's the long answer, but it is the correct answer. At least I believe it is. I wouldn't give you an incorrect answer. And yes, is money flowing into the U.S. stock market from around the world? Absolutely. Positive. Absolutely. Big time. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Tiger TV is an exciting exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. You know, I love when you take the time to either call in or just email me a question. It makes this show goes so much smoother because at this stage of the game by one o'clock in the afternoon you've heard the other shows that are on um oftentimes i don't get a chance to really listen in uh but you know you get guys that 
great guys that are covering the markets, and you don't mean me regurgitate something out there. So I'd much rather look at something very specific to you. And that means uh, we go take a look at uh, the request here from Adam. Uh, Adam says, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well today. I am. Thanks for asking. I hope you're doing well also. What do you think about Amazon after the run up and sell off? So, you know what, I don't know, Adam, is, is your time frame horizon, but if we do take a look at uh, Amazon and we look at the daily and the weekly and the monthly time frame chart here, we're going to see that on the monthly, you're well above any kind of box out there, TAS market profile, resistance, so no resistance there. With regard to the weekly time frame chart, uh, you made a new high last week, no bearish reversal candle, anything along those lines, so that looks pretty good. I will also share with you from a weekly perspective, now, price target, it becomes pretty difficult, becomes difficult for me to give you where the eventual price target is on Amazon because you've had such, there's there's really no great A to B equals CD pattern out here. There's no really great consolidation uh, pattern that exists. I'm looking at a weekly time frame chart. Um, but what you can see out here with regard to the TAS market profiles, and we can just simply come back into, we can go back to 2014. So we can go back four years ago. And what you'll notice here is we haven't seen seen a close below the bottom of a profile with the exception of the time from January of 2016 to February 2016 for one stinking a month out there. And then from a price standpoint, you had, uh, as price was pulling back into August of 2015, which had 30 million shares, you were doing it with about the same volume, maybe slightly more out here. Nonetheless, it found support. And as soon as a new profile kicked in, and that was in February, February 22nd, 2016, we can see that we really haven't closed, or it, when I say we, it's not we thing, but price hasn't closed below the bottom of a box. It's tested the bottom box recently. That was back on April 2nd, 2018. Turns out the bottom of that box, what is a buy point out here? So you're well above that level. The box, by the way, the top is at 1638. That's 300 bucks, give or take, out there. But still nothing bad. On a daily basis, just want to make sure longer term we kind of got that out there. And your question was, uh, what do you think about Amazon after the run up and the sell off? Not really a sell off. So I don't see a sell off. Uh, that's the, that's the, that's the first thing. I don't see a sell off. Do I see a couple of days where price moved lower? Yes. How about take August 17th when price moved into the bottom of its daily profile out there? 1861.35 is the profile. The low 1855.55 close that day at 1882. Hammer candle too, by the way. So now what we see is price is just consolidating between the bottom and top of its box on a daily basis, 1861 to 1925. Is there anything of significance out here that one has to pay attention to? Not that I see. So you're inside a consolidation. If it busts to the downside, then we've got some lower price. And you have to take a look at the swing point, which, by the way, would be the trading day of July 31st. Back to the weekly time frame chart and using Stevie's other charts out here. The only thing I see is that last week was a Tom DeMarc set up nine count out here. Um, that high hasn't been taken out. Sometimes you can see a pullback after a nine. Not always. Sometimes you can. Um, in essence, we saw that take place. It was a small pullback, the one from June 15, 2018. That pulled back into the week of uh, the low on June 29th. That was a buy point we just looked at out here. Prior to that was a, a nine count that took place. Um, uh, well, this one on February 23rd really didn't work. It was Stevie's RMI pattern that actually worked and gave you the signal that price was going to move lower. I'm sure that was back into a bottom of a box as well. On the weekly time frame chart, it's just it's slightly cautious, slightly. You're trading above Stevie's green line at 1889. You stay above that, and the caution signs are kind of insignificant. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, Amazon still looks uh, very good, and I just don't see any recent sell-off, so to speak. I just see continued higher highs and higher lows inside Amazon. And the only way, Adam, that you and I can call this is that it's going to continue to move higher. Needs a close above 1925 before it begins that move, so to speak. Uh, PM out there, that was Pat M., writes and says, could you please finish up your discussion on T from yesterday, short-term view. Um, thanks from Willis, Texas. 
I don't know where Willis, Texas is, but it sounds like a pretty cool place. We probably ought to know where Willis, Texas is. But let's go take a look at AT&T. Yeah, I think that was at the end of the show out here yesterday. And even though you say short term out here, we're going to take a look at the short and so-called intermediate term. Um, let me do this, too, on my other chart. It will take just a few moments to load. But here's what we can see, Pat. That is on a weekly basis. So that's the center panel of my screen. Uh, we can see that price this week and last week, by the way, hit the top of its uh, bullish structured weekly profile. And what that says to you and I is that uh, price could pull all the way back, couldn't bust out of it, could pull all the way back to 3169. So on a weekly basis, this appears to just simply be consolidating. Now, the reason why price could or should pull back a little further 3221 is the first number, 3169 is the other, was because you have a brand new profile that formed today. We did not have this yesterday on its daily time frame. So now you're talking about short term. Now, normally, when price forms below a profile, it's a confusing message. It's confusing because typically profiles in a bullish mode trend will begin forming above the prior ones, which is this case, which is today's profile. But usually you don't see price below the bottom of that profile. So that is bearish. So which one is correct out here? I don't know really which one is correct. It is bearish to see this, just directionally speaking, in essence, is what I'm talking about. And so to a certain extent, that says, you know what we should do? We should go see Stevie's other charts. We should go take a look at the daily time frame chart and see where his red slash green line is. Yesterday, what we said, or I said, I'm sure I said, if I took a look at it and I pulled this chart up, was that AT&T was just simply pulling back to its oscillator on change line. Stevie's red line, 32.62 is the number today. Well, you're below it. I don't know where the close is going to be. A close back above 32.62 says, okay, support is held. A close below 32.62, the line is green. This is what you would expect because this line turned from red to green on August 15th. This is kind of, not kind of, let me take that back. This is the bullish or bearish, directly speaking, test. It's unfolding today. We can't call it at 137 in the afternoon. It's a daily chart. But if it does close below that, that says more of a retracement is in place for us. And then we go out and try to identify those next levels of support. And we don't really have that inside of AT&T. T is the ticker symbol on a daily time frame chart, which is what helps you and I revert back to the weekly. Does that make sense? What I just said? I hope it does, Pat. Uh, I hope I didn't confuse the heck out of you. Again, I'll summarize it like this. If AT&T closed below 3262, what we're likely going to see is a continued move lower. Is it going to be 3221? Probably. It may also be 3169. So I help that. Uh, and if it closes above 3262, well, then what you're watching, because that's a good question. I know you were going to ask that. Because you would say, hey, you, you did all this and you didn't tell me what's going to happen if it closes above that. 3286 is a level of resistance, the bottom of its new daily profile. Close above that, 3329. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. back up folks we got two questions on deck here the first one from uh, Hector C and then the uh, other one inside the den uh, uh, to take from John to take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 so let's go to Hector's question first he was in uh, first we do priority seating here and uh, Hector says hi Steve can you please predict uh oh predict where support is for smart SMRT and its potential and and is a potential run over for the next uh, few months. Wow. Hector the Inspector. I like, I think yesterday I said fuel injectors. I think it's really groove injectors, isn't it? But I like Hector the Inspector out there. And P.S. Happy Thirsty Thursday. You know, Hector, I like the way you think. I think we should tip a glass tonight. The question is, and you're up in Marietta, Marietta, Georgia. So that's different than Marietta, Georgia. Oh, California. What am I talking about? I, I, I'll i come out to California and tip a glass with you. Uh, but uh, I'll bring the sake, and I'll even bring the red wine. And then we'll just simply go from there. All right, so if we take a look at Steinmark, that's what SMRT is. You're asking me to predict support. I won't predict it. I'll let our tools do that here. We're going to go ahead and put up our Ninja Trader, Stevie's Green Line, and that's at 275, and it's trading at 275. Price is trading right now at support. Now, here's what is the phenomenon. I can't tell you why it works. I just know that it works out there, and that's on the trading day of August 14th. Here's what I've got a call right now from California. I don't know who's calling me from California, but San Francisco. We probably should take it. They, they probably heard me talk about sake, and, and they're trying to ship the order. Actually, uh, that is probably some wine that is supposed to be shipped out. In any event out here, two, let's get back to the charts here. 275. The, 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 the phenomena is when Stevie's red line turns green, trading day of August 14th, you anticipate that price and that line are going to catch up to each other. We don't know when. We just know that it's going to happen. Well, in the case of Smart, Steinmart, it actually occurred on August 17th. Price came down, tested it, and that was a bullish test out there. Price went ahead and moved higher. Now, look, what we also know is the day preceding that test, the bears were out. 
in full blast. We know that because it was big old bearish engulfing candle out here. All we have to do is look over to the left-hand side of the chart, Hector, and see, well, the last time we saw bearish candlesticks form, you had a nice little dark cloud cover on June 21st. You had a little bearish engulf on June 23rd. So we know this 311-ish type area is where the snipers are sitting. The bulls and bears, they can't hide. They show themselves all the time. So that's what we know is really a resistance level. We'll call the resistance level from two days ago a shooting star, the exact opposite of the hammer candle. That means at 328 is really where you've got some stiff resistance. Now, what happens if price closes below that 275 level today? Then, to conclude that the run is over for the next few months, that's a big jump, at least from the daily chart perspective. But right now, we don't know that. Right now, right now, there's a battle, in essence, between Stevie's red slash green line, 275, and the 320-ish type area. And it's a tug of war. And I don't know who's going to win that battle. Okay, so we've got that over. We know where resistance is. If we do see the bears pile on, what they will do, Hector, is they will push price down to the bottom, it appears, the bottom of the weekly profile first. That's the center panel out here. That center panel says 249. But this chart here, Steinmart, is a little bit more difficult to call. And the reason is because right now, for the month of August, price is trading above the top of a bearish structured profile. Let me go ahead and see and, and, and explain to you again what it is we're looking at. And it's much easier if we go ahead and we turn off price. As we turn off price here, you will see a fairly wide profile, by the way. Bottom is 84 cents. Top is 262. But look at where the center line is, 226. See, at 262, we know there are sellers there. You and I know this. And then what we know, because that center line is so close to the top, there's really a huge group of sellers between 226 and 262. The question is, in a bullish market, can that be overcome? And as we turn price on, and it's only August 23rd, but if you get a close above that, um, I would be hard-pressed to say, yeah, this is uh, over for the next few months out here. I would say from a monthly chart, you get a close above 262, and all the stuff we looked at on the daily and weekly chart is just noise out here. That's, that's how we've got to make that call. So what you're going to watch for today is the 275 level. If it holds, then support has held inside of Steinmart. Again, the ticker symbol there is uh, SM. RT. Now let's go take a look at what uh, John and the Tigers didn't want to look at. That was the Russell 2000. And John specifically is uh, looking for, wants to take a look at the details, support levels on the 30, 240 daily, and so forth. So uh, we'll give you a 30. We're going to go ahead and change over to a 30-minute time frame. And here you're going to get five. Uh, for the price of one, 32.40 daily. So we got 32.40. We got the five-hour time frame chart, which I know you like, and we've got the uh, daily. So let's start from right to left out here. And right to left, we're taking a look at the weekly time frame chart. You can see where prices tested the prior weekly high. That was the week from uh, June 18th out here. That began June 18th. Price is slightly below that. But what price has not done on a weekly basis is it closed below the top of its box out there, 1705.75. In the case of the Russell 2000, on a weekly basis, that means tomorrow, if price closed over 1705.75, it's bullish because you closed over the top of a box. And it hasn't done that. It's doing it right now, but I'm saying it hasn't done that since that box formed. And that box formed back in uh, June, the end of June out there. So the first thing you're going to be watching for tomorrow in the Russell 2000, if you're on the short side, you need to see this, or you should want to see this close below 1705.75. A close above it, this is, uh, the short call is kind of suspect, especially as we come into fund buying out there. And the reason why that's important at least I believe it's important. Let me see here where I put that chart. Where did I put that chart? Did I put that chart somewhere? Is this where it is? No, that's not it. That's not it. I, I know it's out here somewhere. Um, well, let me do this. Let me come. Maybe I put it right here. I don't know that I did. Did I? Yeah, I did. Oh, it's right here in front of my face. So especially as we come into fund buying, because what do we know when we take a look at the Russell 2000? Well, 
Priced in uh, yen, it went up in uh, actually intraday, made a new all-time high today. It's not trading above it right now. Trading in pound sterling, you're at a brand new all-time high. In euros, you're basically just kind of trading inside a uh, consolidation-ish type area out here. It just doesn't look that bad when we take a look at the Russell 2000 daily equity futures contract in all major currencies. We're not seeing, like, failures across the board. So, yeah, there could be sellers in the U.S., but one thing is for sure, there are buyers, there are momentum buyers, and that's for sure, that are sitting right over in London town right now. Now, it could be there at the pub. 149, what's the time zone difference there? Five or six during daylight savings time. I think it's 6.50, 7 o'clock. And there's a few slugs that are already down. But nonetheless, those guys that are actually gals that are sitting in the office right now, you, everybody that's selling, this is, kind of goes back to Kevin, Kevin S's, hey, every dip gets bought. Of course, Kevin was looking at the dips in the U.S. So you look at the dip in the U.S., you say, who's buying it? Because it wasn't Kevin. It was Kevin's uh, cousin that was sitting over, in this case here, it was Russell 2000, that was sitting over in uh, the U.K. May even be Kevin's, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin's son in uh, Tokyo that's buying. Although... They're done for the evening. They're probably sleeping. Hey, here's the rest of your profiles for you. 1705.95 is the daily top of the box as well. Be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Uh, folks, 
So uh, we got the two-minute wrap-up basically here. So let's go to the uh, most recent question that came in. Mike from uh, Nashua. Mike says, hi, Steve. Can you talk about gold? Can you share an opinion on whether you think 1192.60 will hold? So here's what we know about gold thus far. We know that it formed uh, the, the low that uh, formed out here August 15th hasn't been taken out. That was down at the price point of 1167. Uh, the blue bars, we're looking at a 30-minute time frame chart, just so you know. And uh, on the 30-minute chart, we, the, what I have out here are the daily profiles. So I've got an intraday time frame, but I have the daily profiles. This is, and we can see that the daily profile, it is a bearish structured profile. So we know that sellers were just simply camped out of the 120810 level. Price got up there at about 8 o'clock in the morning yesterday. So before about an hour, price hung out at 120810. Snipers, sellers, you know, just simply picking off buyers at that stage. Significant level of resistance. 120810 is something key to be looking for. What else do we know? Well, I believe the level that Michael was referring to, uh, which was the 119260 level, if we go from the low that was out there to the high, what we're going to see, let me turn off the profile box. Now you're going to see that that was a 0.382 retracement. That's all gold is done. I don't know. It, 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 is it going to hold? Well, it, it's held thus far. All it's doing is just kind of really churning sideways. You had volume down here. Let me try to move this over so see if you can see it. Uh, so when price pushed down first into the 0 0.382 retracement, it was at 3 o'clock this morning. There were 21,000 contracts sold during that 30-minute time frame. We're down there now, in essence, with 9,000 contracts. So it's really pushing lower with light volume compared to Compared to that, even at uh, 5 o'clock this morning, there were 4,900 contracts versus, well, that was 9,000. I'm, I'm still sticking with the 21,000 contracts, the so-called dump at 3 a.m. out here. So it looks like it's going to hold. I don't know if it will hold, but it sure at this stage here looks like it will hold. If it doesn't hold, you should anticipate that the gold will get down to 1182.90. Gold right now is outperforming the mining sector, but gold thus far holding up pretty well. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, my favorite polar bear, he's up next. Tom O'Brien, 325. And I'll be back with you on a fantastic, fabulous, fun day Friday. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.